Hi, my name is Norman Fenton, and this presentation is a very brief graphical example of a statistical paradox that has tricked many people and led to flawed decision making. The example is a study of patients with kidney stones. Some patients got treatment A, and the rest got treatment B. Now we want to know which treatment is best based on which achieved the lowest proportion of unsatisfactory outcomes. There were 100 patients who got treatment A, and similarly there were 100 patients who got treatment B. Of the 100 patients who got treatment A, 37 had an unsatisfactory outcome. And of the 100 patients who got treatment B, just 24 had an unsatisfactory outcome. So the failure rate for treatment A you can think of as 37%, and 24% for patients with treatment B. So clearly treatment B is best overall. Or is it? The problem is that the data hides the fact that some patients had only small stones while others were large. So let's look at those who got treatment A with only small stones. There were just 10 of those. Whereas for patients with treatment B, there were 90 who had small stones. Of the 10 with treatment A and small stones, only one had an unsatisfactory outcome. For patients with treatment B, 18 had an unsatisfactory outcome. So the overall failure rate for patients with treatment A and small stones was 10%, and for patients with treatment B with small stones, the failure rate was 20%. So treatment A is better than treatment B for patients with small stones, and that was exactly the opposite of the overall failure rate. Now let's look at patients with large stones. There were 90 of those who got treatment A. There were only 10 patients with large stones who got treatment B. In terms of the failure rates, there were 36 with large stones who got treatment A, and there were 6 with large stones who got treatment B. So that's a 40% failure rate for patients with treatment A with large stones, compared to 60% failure rate for patients who got treatment B with large stones. And again, treatment A is better than treatment B for patients with large stones. This reversal in outcomes is an example of Simpson's paradox. Now let's combine the patients again. So we'll add the patients who got treatment A who had small stones, and we'll add the patients with treatment B who had small stones, and we'll add the failures. So there, there we are, back to the aggregated data. And so you can see that treatment A is better in each subcategory of patients, but is worse overall. Now there's a causal explanation for this. We know that the treatment clearly affects the outcome, but the original raw data suggests wrongly that B is better than A. In fact, there's a common factor affecting both the treatment chosen and the outcome, and that's of course the stone size. People with large stones are much more likely to get treatment A, already suggesting that A is more likely used on the more complicated cases. And people with large stones are also much more likely to have an unsatisfactory outcome. So the effect of treatment on outcome is confounded by the common causal factor, stone size. Hence stone size is what we call a confounding variable. Now this is actually based on a real observational study of 700 patients. 350 had treatment A, 350 had treatment B. Treatment B is better overall, the recovery rate here is 83%, but it's worse in every subcategory when we split data by the size of the kidney stones. So for patients with small stones, A is better, that's 93% compared to 87%. For patients with large stones, A is again better, 73% compared to 69%. So patients with large stones were clearly more likely to be given treatment A. Only by understanding the underlying causal model can we fix the erroneous conclusions made in such observational studies.